Estamos por aterrizar en la Antártida. We're about to land in Antarctica, a mysterious and unexplored continent. Bueno, aquí estamos. Here we are. We're stopping for a little bit to see what the scientists are up to. Mi nombre es Rosario. My name is Rosario Jimenez Gili. I'm a filmmaker and science communicator. Please join me on this journey. Antarctica is a very precious continent to the scientific community for being both a remote, unexplored land and a place to study signs relating to climate change. Thanks to the Chilean Antarctic Institute and the research center, Dynamics of Marine Ecosystems of High Latitudes, I'm lucky enough to accompany a group of scientists during the expedition known as ECA-55. We're right in front of the recently christened iceberg, Oscar. <laughs> we'll be staying at King George Island at the Chilean research station, Julio Escudero, on the shores of Filde Peninsula. We're having lunch at Escudero base. They made potato pie. How's the food, guys? Are you having a good time in Escudero Base? <laughs> I saw firsthand what was required of scientific research, as well as all of the human aspects that are required for an expedition to Antarctica. Less than a month. Less than one month? Wow. And will it eventually melt? Antarctica, the inhospitable white continent that we see today, was once a land of lush subtropical forests full of palm trees, ferns, and conifers. Forests began to gain a foothold in Antarctica 298 million years ago, during a period known as the Permian when the weather turned warmer and the glaciers of the Ice Age began to recede. In, tiempos algo más cercano, In more recent eras, fossils have revealed the existence of other forests of ferns and conifers, home to the majestic dinosaurs who roamed during the beginning of the Jurassic period. These forests, similar to ones we see in today's temperate zones, survived in the polar winter's darkness, is a mystery scientists have not been able to solve. Pangaea was a supercontinent that formed during the end of the Paleozoic and early Mesozoic eras. Formed by the movement of tectonic plates 300 million years ago, it united all the continents into one. 100 million years later, it began to fracture and disperse, creating the continents we see today. 35 million years ago, the Southern Ocean is formed when South America separates from Antarctica allowing the merger of the Pacific and the Atlantic Oceans through Drake Passage. Here, the Antarctic Circumpolar Current is born. One of the most important marine currents is the Antarctic Circumpolar Current, which carries water around Antarctica. Since there's no continental barrier in this region, we could say it's the only current that circumnavigates around the entire planet. The Antarctic Circumpolar Current is the current responsible for connecting the major ocean bodies, the Pacific, Atlantic, and Indian Oceans. 
flowing eastward in a clockwise direction. This current is generated by wind, and it's by far the most intense current on the planet. Very deep water is formed, known as Antarctic bottom water. This water mass, when it's in contact with the atmosphere, achieves a type of equilibrium, balancing CO2 and balancing other greenhouse gases. When this water ultimately sinks, it then takes those gases from the atmosphere and carries them to the ocean floor. As a result, it mitigates global warming and slows increases in atmospheric CO2. This is already my sixth day in Antarctica, and I must admit, it's the first that I'm really enjoying it. There were several groups of scientists studying different aspects of climate change, from marine biology, glaciology, and oceanography, among other subjects. I'll start sharing my experience with a group of physical oceanographers where I was lucky enough to embark on the Carpouche, a vessel belonging to the Chilean Antarctic Institute. Planet Earth, perhaps mistakenly known as Planet Earth, is mainly covered by water. Around 70% belongs to the oceans, and the Southern Ocean is one of them. My name is Andrea Piñones. I am an oceanographer and a professor at the Austral University of Chile in Valdivia. And in recent years, I have been dedicated to studying the oceanography of the Southern Ocean. This year, I started my own research project taking measurements of the currents within the oceanic circulation of Maxwell Bay. We're about to board a ship called Carpool and see firsthand the research of Andrea Pinones and her team as we spend the night at sea. So tomorrow we have to try to leave at dawn, at around four in the morning, so we can take CTD measurements. CTD is an instrument that measures ocean salinity, temperature, and depth. I'm Oscar Pizarro, and I'm an oceanographer. The vessel will travel within 15 measuring points within Fieldus Bay, starting at the furthest point from the coast near the passage of the Antarctic Circumpolar Current. It's my first time doing this type of measurement here in Antarctica, and I always like new challenges. So I'm excited to be here. The CTD takes measurements of conductivity, temperature, and seawater depth, and also has sensors that measure oxygen and fluorescence. This allows us to understand how the surface of waters of the bay are being oxygenated and nourished, allowing for the existence of algae and other organisms responsible for producing photosynthesis. With this survey, we'll know how bodies of water change and how currents move water from other regions of the Antarctic. The observations that we're taking will help validate the circulation model that we're studying. Once we know that the model works, that the simulations and projections are correct, we can then use that model to see the effects of climate change. We can see how the model changes due to the wind or air and ocean temperatures, giving us insight about the future circulation. Mm. 
el océano Antártico. The Southern Ocean is the first link that sustains life on this continent. Microorganisms, algae, and different types of animals live in this ecosystem, all connected and affected in one way or another by climate change. Understanding more about marine currents and their importance in the oxygenation of the planet gives us new insights on how to care for our ecosystem and the critical role played by the sea in the balancing of our planet.